some trash in it. I kind of ignored the fact that I was painting on a dirty floor. So that's my bad. But, I mean, he wanted a black grill. So that's where I'm at. Anyways, I wanted to get that started because I want that to dry. So I do want to fit the grill and the new bumper eventually. But uh, I do need to do some body work. Now, I'm ignoring the fender just because I did order one. So it'll be here. But the hood in the front bumper needs some attention. Uh, this has like, a, I don't know what happened here. There's a divot there. There's divots the whole way across the top. So we need to body work the whole top of this. And I do have flexible putty, which is what you use on plastic bumpers. Haven't really used it that much. But I, I should honestly fit the grill in because it will help form this bumper a little bit better. But I can clip it in without the trim piece on it, the silver trim piece. Here it is. There's screws that hold that in. There's screws that hold it back, but it also clips into the bumper. I think I'm just going to clip it in without any of the screws in it just to help it shape. If you notice, what I did was I scuffed this all with 400. Then I went over it with adhesion promoter after I wiped it down. Then this is just 2X Rust-Oleum, which this stuff covers awesome. It's a primer and a paint. Um, and it, <laughs> if you go way back in my videos, now I didn't video myself doing it, but I painted a whole car with Rust Oleum 2X paint. And honestly, that car was just on the market for parts, and the paint held up really well. And that was maybe five, six years ago, might even been later than that. So that's what I threw on here. But I didn't use adhesion promoter when I did that. I think this will hold up a little bit better. And then being on the front of the car, I kind of wanted that on there to help it stick. Alright, so you can see I got a lot of work into this so far. This flexible putty, it, it, it's a lot harder to work with than this other stuff I use. This um, icing, USC icing. I like that stuff. It's, it's like really easy to sand, really easy to work with. Um, don't use it like real thick. You know, this is a thin coating just to take out imperfections. I'm going to use that now on the bumper because instead of 
using this uh, flexible putty, I'm to the point here. This is indented. I'm not worried about the face of this being indented. It's just this would look horrible across the top of here. And as of right now, it feels pretty dang good. Now, when you sand these bumpers, being that it's plastic, you can't just hold the sander on it because it doesn't sand it then. It ends up melting it. And then it's, you know, gives you a melted surface. So you have to, like, graze it with the sander or put the sander... I used this and just held it in a little bit so it was spinning slowly and just kind of slowly jabbed at it so it put scratches in it. You don't want to hold it on there. Like I said, it's just going to melt that thing away. I used 240 to sand this down. I got one little pit right there I can feel and then around these edges here. I just want to fill in these pits. See, there's one there. There's one here. There's one there. So I don't want to this is not flexible this stuff, but I'm, that's what I'm going to use to fill in these areas um, They all feel pretty good I'm going to spray adhesion promoter on this and then go over it with some primer and then we'll sand it and see what it looks like But let me finish body work and all this stuff. It's I still got a ways to go uh, I gotta sand that some more and then add some in here and then we'll get into uh, putting some primer on those areas and then seeing how they turn out. not looking half bad I see a couple areas where I'm like eh but we're rolling with it so um, I did hit hit this with an adhesion promoter before I went over it with primer uh, I always like to do that whenever it's bare plastic to make sure it bonds because bare plastic stuff doesn't like to stick to it so uh, that's what I did well, everything was wiped down um, self etching primer on the bare metal over here then three coats of uh, filler pl primer filler primer same filler primer that I put on the bumper now I'll have to sand this smooth and I do have some scratches I think out past yeah I got some out past where I taped that up but then I also have some areas here where their primer that they used wrinkled didn't I, I don't know not liking uh, their primer and then there's areas where it looks like it is shiny and that's not typical so I don't know what's going on with this bumper but I mean this is probably the worst one I've ever gotten so that's where we're at um, come back tomorrow and we'll start sanding the primer down and see what it the finished product looks like then All in all, I'm really happy with that. Now, I did have to do a couple more coats of primer on a couple areas. I had some little pit holes in some areas I burned through. So, so I added some primer into that so we can sand it again. This one was like I, I sanded through the coating and there was like a kind of a hole there. Well, it wasn't a hole, but it was like a layer where it was, you know, it would show up if you painted it so i added some more primer right here in this area because that's where it was at and i'm going to sand that again i need to sand i got some 
honey on the bottom side of the hood right there. I need to get that sanded off and across the front of that too. But for the most part, I did pretty good with it. I burned through in an area and I had a piece of bare metal there. So I just coated this one more time. If I have bare metal the next time after I sand it, I'll just wait and I'll do self-etching primer before I throw some sealer across this area. And we'll be doing sealer. I'll do the whole bumper with a coat of sealer. Probably going to do, uh, I hope. I hope we're going to do gray. I never even looked to see if we had sealer. Maybe we're not even going to do sealer. You would think this would be something that I would I'd keep tabs on. But obviously I didn't. Thank God. I thought I had silver or gray sealer. But I was having trouble finding it. And this thing's almost full. So that's, that's good. I was about to freak out there for a second. Because I want to paint this thing next weekend. Just how I said I would like to. There's, a, there's also a possibility that I don't get it painted next weekend. But I'm definitely going to try. All right, kids, brand new fender. My brother brought seat covers because tan, you know what I mean? It's going to get dirty and as clean as these are. So, yeah, and they're not, they're cheap ones from Always. If you're from Pennsylvania, you know what Always is. It's good stuff. Cheap. <laughs> so, yeah, he got two seat covers for like, I don't know, 15 bucks, something like that. So, they don't look the best, you know what I mean? It's stuff that, was in the store and didn't sell, then always gets it and they sell it. So that's how that place works. I used to get all my cleaning products there. Everything. I kind of still do. Anyways, this is a brand new fender. And I had it lean against the side of the car. And when I got those seat covers, I put them in. And then I sat down in it to see, you know, if they would move around or if they would fit right. And as soon as I sat down, I heard clang, 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 clang. Fender fell over. Thankfully, no dents, okay? It didn't dent anything. It did scratch the primer that they put on there. So normally what I would do is uh, I'd scuff this with like a 600 because the primer on these is real thin. But I was like, you know, screw it. I did it with uh, 400 and I'm going to wipe this thing down. I'm going to hit it with some self-etching primer. And then I'm going to hit it with some filler primer, and then we'll sand it again. Um, and it's going to get sealed, too. The hood, I mostly sanded last week. Uh, I got to do around the edges and stuff, because I, like, I didn't want to get this headlight or, or the fender or any of that stuff. So I, I was like real easy on the side here. So I still need to sand around the edges a little bit. And just there's a couple spots I can still see shining uh, looking at it. And I haven't wiped it off yet, either. So... We got to do that, and I still need to sand the bumper, but before I take the bumper off, I want to get my uh, stapler out, my hot staple gun, and, and staple that centerpiece. Not that it matters, but that supports the bumper, and um, it's broken, so I'm just going to throw a couple hot staples in that while I can see it. And currently, I'm trying, because I noticed on TikTok, people that do lives, and they have like their cars in the background and stuff, they get a lot of views and a lot of followers and stuff. And you have to have 500 followers to even do a live. So I'm trying to get 500 followers on TikTok so that I can do lives. Like right now, what I'm doing, I would just set up a camera and do live feed of me doing the body work and stuff. So if you're interested in that, plus it'll keep you up to date because you know my videos are behind. You'd see this in real time and kind of get an idea of what's going on on the channel uh so i'm gonna try to do lives on there as long as tiktok's around I'm not sure if it's gonna be around very long but just 
in hopes that I can kind of grow my channel a little bit more. I kind of like gave up on it for a while, but I wanted to try again. Not this video, but I got the new valve stem so I can put the tire pressure sensors in the tires. I still have to wire the fog lights. I still want to fix the doors. I don't know if I talked about it on video yet, but yeah, I did. I just haven't edited it yet. But yeah, those doors, how they clunk when you shut them. They have supports in them that are glued. The glue must have let loose. So now when you shut the door, it vibrates and it sounds worse than that Honda Fit. <laughs> Those doors clunked whenever you shut it, but this, these sound like you're like the door's about to fall off. So, and it's only the passenger doors, basically. I think that, I think the rear driver's one does too. Listen for it. No, not as bad. It's not as bad. So, uh, we'll get to that stuff too but yeah well um the front lip that you seen i got that it's 30 bucks in hopes that it would look right on this does not look right at all my brother agreed I'm just gonna push it aside it'll fit something else i get it's nice to have stuff like that you spruce something up make it look a little different people like that and then they're like oh i like that car because it's got this stuff on it so it's, well, yeah it's nice have a couple Chinese parts laying around. All right, so I just played musical car so I could get this thing put in this way. I do want to move it backwards a little bit because um, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be painting the hood on the car and then I'm going to be painting the fender and the bumper off of the car. And so that way I want to have some room up front here to, to put the bumper and the fender, you know, just for painting purposes if i had the car the other way i'm crammed for space back there a lot more space here and then i'm gonna have a fan in the door plus i'm gonna have my fans going back here too so today's flavor is some vgg with some with some imports even yeah how about her Just made a discovery okay. this is in fact i know now 100 percent that this is a replacement engine this is not the original engine that came in this car i say that because if you're looking at it right there i believe that's lkq that does that because the engine that i got from lkq for the cadillac had the same markings on it so if you see it it's like a stamp seal whatever and they put it on with some sort of stuff and i heard if they if you overheat the engine 
that that will actually come off. I don't know. But it's just like a, a marking that they put on their engines. I don't, I don't know if there's a number on it or what. I want to try to contact LKQ to see if they have record. I, I, I don't know if I can actually get a, a record of what this engine actually has on it, but there it is. And then I have a number on the front. So normally they put several of those on the engine. There's like ones in different locations, but yeah, there it is. Before we get too deep into this, the uh, only thing I have left to sand is the edges of the hood. It's pretty much done. The bumper sanded, fender sanded, but I want to make sure that fender fits because, like I said, I'm having problems with this one keeping shape. It might be because I don't have this structure fitted right. And also, when I have the headlights on, this headlight is low. Now, it could just be adjustment, but it also could be that that's not pulled out as far as it needs to be. So I'm going to take the headlights out, I'm going to take this fender off, assess the damage, and then I'm going to put that fender on. I don't think I'm going to bolt it on completely. I'm just going to like fit it up there to see how it fits. Make sure I'm not screwing myself here and then have a lot of issues after I already paint the parts. And then there's more uh, chance of me scratching it up, marking it up and stuff. You don't want that to happen. So... Let's try to fit it while it's, you know, I got to clean the stuff still. So let's fit it now. Then we can clean the stuff up and I'm painting tomorrow for sure. So, all right. Just as I expected. Now, putting this fender on will show you a lot because the fender should line up with all the bolt holes. It should. If you look at this, this piece still needs to come forwards. So, I, th I thought that maybe I still wasn't in where I was supposed to be. But, yeah, this still needs to come forward. Um, and it needs to come out some. So, I think... <laughs> might hook it to the uh the car outside <laughs> I'm gonna chain it i'm gonna chain it to the uh brz and try to pull this out <laughs> why not i gotta take the fender back off i'm not gonna do it while the fender's on there i can i can set the fender up there then and look at it later but yeah it needs to come forward some i put the air box back in place and it's this bracket I don't think got bent, but that needs to come forward some so that this lines up. Now, I can push this forward and line it up. So, I mean, that doesn't really matter. It's the fact that this fender, I got the bolts in it, and we're not lined up here. Now, we're close. We're, like, within a quarter of an inch. So, I think the right thing to do is to pull this some more, and then we'll try to... Um, I'm not going to put all the bolts in this thing, but I would try to put the headlight back in it and see how everything fits because the headlight was a little off too. And this would have been the reason why. So yeah, let's, let's give her a shot.
this all the way to this. Now, I'm definitely not one of the Can't hate that. It was a lot further off the last time I had the lights on, like way off. Um, I didn't even want to try to adjust them. A lot closer this time, and they adjusted up just right. So, yes, I had to really tweak on that thing to get all the bolt holes to line up with the fender and everything, but now I can put a bolt in every hole. So now everything needs to come off of there, and I need to throw some self-etching primer on it because there's bare metal there, and then I'm just going to hit it with some spray paint. Uh, it's... Where is it? I have like the steal it. It's not steal it. It's the cheap version to steal it. I have that. I might do it with that. Come back out here tomorrow and I'm going to clean the area, get this ready for paint. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit paint in this video. It's probably going to be next. Why is there dirt on my face? But anyways, we'll get everything ready and then maybe we'll just do a paint episode then. Yeah, that sounds better. I just crammed more in today than I did with your mom. Oh, and before I go in, I meant to say... That valve cover has a number on it, and the front cover has a number on it, and we established that it's an LKQ motor. Not 100% sure, but the number wrote on it could be the mileage that was on this engine when it was put in. Now, I don't have any history of when it was installed, but it's very clean. But the number that's on it is 42,000. 721 that's what it says on the front that's what it says on the valve cover 42,000 miles so I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess this has well under a hundred thousand miles on it which is awesome for him because he'll, he'll just drive this forever uh, but yeah so if you guys know, let me know. I just went back and looked through pictures of that Cadillac motor that I got from LKQ. And I didn't see where they wrote it on it anywhere. But that doesn't mean that every LKQ location does the same thing. But I did, another thing I figured out is this thing was serviced in Bedford, which is like an hour from me. So I don't know if there's an LKQ out that way or whatever. That number wrote on it. That's probably what they're going to tell me. I was going to call LKQ and see if they could look it up by that number that's on there. But then I started thinking about it more. And I'm like, it's probably just the mileage. Like, it has to be. So I'm not sure how much I got on film. I just realized when I went over to my camera to move it, that my SD card was full and I had already done a bunch of work. So we are ready for paint. I'm not doing it in this episode. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for the next one. Also, I got all new lug nuts for these wheels. If you didn't notice, I'm only running three on each wheel right now because I know they had to come off to put the new valves in. So I'm just going to set them on the tire machine for now and let them fall all over the floor. Oh, I need that. Actually, I'm not using that. Let's get one thing, one last thing out of the way because this, once you spray it, it's good for 24 hours. Uh, no, I still need to wipe the bumper down one more time. I only wiped it down once. I like to wipe them down twice. All right, we'll save that for the next episode. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom wants to come hang in the booth. And we'll see you on the next episode of R-Rack.